Hello everyone, welcome to Fiora. Um, I actually am a little sick, so I don't look my best right now. But the images you guys are seeing right now are actually from the LARP. As promised, there would be a second video about NicoCon, and it is about the primary activity I did at the LARP, at the convention, which was I LARPed. Uh, many of you may or may not know this, I'm a huge nerd! Tabletop or video games, doesn't matter to me. So. We're going to talk about what happened at the LARP with my character, as well as how I interacted with several other characters. Now the people you are seeing right now are all of the wonderful, wonderful individuals who agreed to be on video for the LARP um, when I was recording what little I actually recorded of the LARP. But oh my god, it, we had so much fun. So I'm going to start off with describing the character I was playing. So for those who don't know who Haro is, she is from Spice and Wolf, which is an anime and manga in which, to describe it bluntly, a goddess of harvest and wolves, that's literally what she is, teams up with a merchant to try to go back home and then later find a new home. Um, if that spoiled anything for you guys, guess what? Spoiler alert, I'm gonna spoil stuff. But anyway, the I'm going to go over the context of the LARP first. So, everyone was brought to a planet called Narsala. You weren't exactly told why, other than we were going to this mining colony. And the atmosphere's hostile to anyone who doesn't breathe nitrogen methane, which is basically everyone. You can see where this is going. Haro's from the Middle Ages. I literally don't know how to use science or mechanics throughout the entirety of this, so a lot of the quests I was kind of like, yeah, I, I can't really do all for these guys much, but, but there's a but here. Um, the exact greeting we were given was a malfunctioning machine that basically told us that everything was haywire. The power system was down. The, the slingshot that moves ships at light speed was down. There were no shuttles coming or going. We were there. And there wasn't anything we could do about it. On top of this, um, there were other issues going on. And we're going to get through all of it. Now, I have broken this video down into chapters. So at the end of each chapter, you'll see a screen that says, End Chapter 1. I didn't want to break this into four videos because then it would be posted over the course of four days and I kind of didn't want to do that. I wanted it to all be up so I could get back to my normal stuff that you guys are expecting from Armored Warfare and World of Tanks and Fallout and all that other stuff. By the way, there's a Fallout video up today. You may want to go check it out. I, I, I discovered that I need to readjust myself to playing Fallout greatly. Anyway, the... Uh, so we arrive on this planet, which has a lot of different ways of getting us around, which is the entertaining part. Um, we had moving sidewalks, or Futurama-style tube system. <laughs> and to start with, uh, Gein actually got second place for best LARPer and was playing um, James from Pokemon, the Team Rocket guy. There was no Jesse, just James. Again, this is an anime-based LARP, so you can be any anime, and even some video games were included. So, we were brought through the tube system, and wound up in this derelict section of the, uh, of the mining complex that was old and rusted out. Uh, the only person who got ejected from the tube system who failed to land on their feet was James, who proceeded to land face-first in a pile of dirty clothes. Which made us all laugh horribly. Uh, James, best Pokemon trainer, right? We made it through this by finding Yoda. So, so far we have James for Pokemon, Yoda. By the way, there was also uh, Domno from G Gundam with us. And that gets important later. But we are adventuring through here and... We run into four Pokemon who literally were dressed up like the Ninja Turtles. 
They were I, I forget the exact name of them. It wasn't the Squirtle, but it's the other turtle one that's newer. Um, I don't really keep up with Pokemon, if you can tell. Blasphemy, Fiora! Blasphemy! Oh, you know what? Screw you. But, um, it was quite a hilarious encounter because we weren't actually supposed to fight them. Yeah. That wasn't supposed to be a thing! Why did we do this? Reasons. Anyway, we continued onward after they after we had beaten them up and healed them and James tried to catch one of them while Vash from Trotgun kept shooting his Pokeballs out of the air. Um, we continued on to, uh, to get out of here and it was a little complicated. Um, Haro's ability to kind of sense good and evil and, and spirit energies and, and, and organics type of stuff really came in a little bit of handy because I could point it because we ran into a robot that was also a biological organism but Haro went that thing's evil and we ended up shutting it off mid-sentence people were like what was it gonna say well it's too late now I guess we're leaving and we did leave we managed to get out get back into the mining complex and that was our introduction to the LARP for the new people who were new to this particular live-action roleplay I'm not new to LARP but I was new to this particular one um, I then proceeded to spend the night going through the uh, going through the mining operation missions now I paused there because I had to think for a minute and, and I'm trying to remember a name. But basically, we went through all of these various mining... Haro didn't get much out of this. Um, in reality, it was more to gain alliances. And to get to know people. But, uh, at the end of the night, we did find out a couple things. One... Haro kind of discovered the planet was sentient. We, and was looking for people to represent... The, 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 then another group discovered it was looking for people to represent it and it was using these symbol stones. If you got one of these symbol stones, then you were given the opportunity to go try to get to represent the planet. And one of the coolest things that the GMs did was it was pure roleplay. There was no stats or chops or anything for this. It was you making decisions as your character would for the chosen anime you come from. Anyway, Satomi, I believe, is the one who got... Because there was only one of these aspects chosen on Friday night. And it was Satomi Hakase from... I'm trying to remember the anime... Now that I'm, uh, I'm, I'm trying, I, 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 there's a lot of animes that I haven't seen that were involved in this, and I'm trying to remember, uh, okay, uh, I wish you would give me more concrete information about this. Oh, it's, uh, Nagima. So, so Satomi Hakase, student number 24, who's a robotics expert of all things, and her nickname is the Professor or Doctor, uh, became the aspect of life. Yeah. It was referred to as growth, life, same thing, um, but became that aspect. And that's when we kind of found out what the big underlying plot was, was about this planet. Now there were only supposed to be four aspects and that's going to be something to keep in mind later in the video because there's going to be a fifth that becomes, that gets created over the course of the LARP. Um, the next day, because I spent the rest of the night doing little mining things, I ended up getting a, uh, a cape for Haru's full size, for Haru going from her um, her young girl, her young woman form to her full-size raging goddess wolf form which is 10 feet tall and 14 and 18 feet long we i got a cloak together and put 
and infuse some of the metal we got from the mining operation, but I never went mining again for a very good reason. And it happened on the second day. On the second day, Haro went to all of the aspect trials. All three of the remaining ones. I didn't have a stone until after the second one. Now, during the second one, it was for the trial called Dark Blood, referred to as Domination and Power. The Count of Monte Cristo, whom I had had a lovely tea party with the previous night and eaten all of his apples, um, proceeded to uh, offer me the stone. And I looked at him and I said, I am... I am a, a goddess of two sides and of balance. I cannot take the stone of power, is what it came down to. So the Count of Monte Cristo went in. Domo from... Now, this is when Haro was actually at, and I remember all this very well. Uh, Domo, uh, Domo from G Gundam, i.e. Shining Finger, uh, representative of Japan, went in. Captain Harlock went in. Deathlock went in. And... Agito from Fairy Tale went in. So these are the pictures of all these people in here right now. And the challenge... So first they were offered three large stones and five small stones. And could pick whatever they wanted. Now Haru sat there and, and was told that she should not interfere. So, But we also became the most active peanut gallery ever. Because I immediately blurted out... The why uh, this is my exact wording. The wise wolf knows exactly what you should choose, and if you wish to ask, she will answer. I got a I got, I got a glare from 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 Gonzi being played by one of the GMs. Like, oh God, no, she figured it out. Uh, but the correct answer, if you're gonna play for domination and and power, is to take all of them and ask for more. However. No one did that. As a matter of fact, Captain Harlock took none. Now what these stones became was that they were the ability to split your will between various points by committing more stones to control territory. As they were put into an arena and as they moved around, their territory kind of expanded and visibly showed, while we're sitting in an active volcano by the way, so just to get the setting right, we're in an active volcano, okay? Uh, the rock around us is razor hot. And the first thing that happened was um, Domo took a little territory. Agito took some territory. Harlock didn't move. Harlock sat and bolstered and defended what Harlock had. And then signed a temporary alliance with Deathlock. Yeah, that happened. The sleazy tyrant signed... An alliance with the honorable pirate. Not quite sure how you're an honorable pirate, but anyway, um, the count and Domo actually started clashing. While well, Agito was trying to bash his way through Harlock's defenses, Deslock actually became a bastard and turned and proceeded to shoot the Count of Monte Cristo out of the arena. To which Domo went, "You are a dishonorable." What, fill in blank and went right after him and Agito seeing this went after him as well Harlock sat there continuing his to bolter his defense um, Deslock tried to weaken Agito on his way out and then tossed Harlock some aid and Harlock refused it on top of the fact that when the count went out she he tossed a little bit of aid to Domo and then the most unexpected thing in the world happened they reached equilibrium because Agito flipped to Akito, i.e. the kid who just wants to have fun. So Harlock is in the middle. Domo and Akito are chasing each other around the arena until they reach pretty much equilibrium where they own everything on the outside and Harlock owns the middle. So you had a Harlock Juicy Donut. <laughs> At which time uh, Harlock realizes Harlock can't win. Harlock didn't take any stones. Harlock can't split his will and can't push 
either of these out without risking losing, but Harlock also realized Harlock was now kingmaker. Harlock could choose who won. And Harlock, after a after a battle with Domo and Akito, chose Domo. Who then got who then after everyone else was out of the arena, Domo got buried in a cave in. We all heard this thumping heartbeat. As we ran out, the cave exploded and Domo comes up with fiery red eyes and the powers of the planet's domination and and will to drive infused in. Um, that was a huge statement. Now, afterwards, the Count of Monte Cristo gave Haro a Stone of Median, the third trial and the third aspect. And the goal of Median was to create balance, use its power to maintain order and balance, which was perfect, almost perfect for Haro, almost, except for Haro's a little jaded. So almost immediately, the next thing I got to go on was the Stone of Median quest because it was literally just time. Uh, I At this point, I wasn't doing any mining quests anymore because it, I, I had realized this is harming the planet, and the planet is lashing out at us for doing it. By the way, before we get into the Stone of Media, this is the end of part one. Get ready for part two. And we're back. So part two, Stone of Median. We were brought and placed upon several pillars inside a very deep cave in which we were bathed in yellow light. There was Mako from Kill a Kill, Lady Un, um, there were actually two, uh, Hem, Hem, Hamel, I'm trying to pronounce his name right, and I can't remember what anime he's from. There's the picture. There was another character whose name I never got, and also ended up just withdrawing. James from Pokemon. Yeah, we're getting in there now. You guys are like, what? Uh, I'm not quite sure which anime he's from, but he was there. Ryo. It's the, uh, I'm, I'm going to look him up real quick. I should have done this before. Um, but he was there. And he was the, uh, and we had a debate to go about. And the debate, and remember, this is all role play. For these stones, there was no... Numbers were not a thing. Here we go. He is a member from Holy and the main character from Scryed. So now you know who he is. But we were debating first about Ultraman and him taking the face of someone else. Uh, Haro's resolution was, you're dead. Um, you no longer have any control over what people do with the narrative of your life. Face it, if you have a problem with it, too bad. On top of that, he's been an honorable person and there's absolute, I see no wrong here. So I, so it was kind of a siding of balance. Um, there was a huge, huge debate over this. Then, the GM had to walk out and go, and he came back and he went, I don't know what to do when there are eight, pl when there are eight people who are all in first place. We were giving him, making him pull his hair out. So then we were placed up that we had to uh, decide if we could work together as a council of eight. Four people withdrew, which was the intention. And then we continued the debate and continued the debate for quite some time. And what it came down to was uh, Ryu never faltered on his stance. James wasn't exactly the right choice because James wasn't the brightest light bulb in the shed. 
Uh, Lady Oon was apparently not the right choice because her two different personalities were a direct conflict against each other between her war and peace personalities. And Hara wasn't the right choice because she was a little jaded. But, there's a big but here. James got a legendary Pokemon. Lady Oon's two personalities were brought together in harmony with each other and actually fused into one personality. Haro, and this is important, this is very important. Remember how I mentioned a fifth aspect got formed? Haro at this time was looking for a home, a permanent home. And the planet decided to bestow upon her goddess of nature. But that's not the entirety of the fifth aspect that was formed. That's kind of a minor, I'm not quite an aspect, but I do have some more powers than most people. And I can actually, and the planet respects me enough to let me walk around and breathe and, and not necessarily be immediately attacked by creatures. As a matter of fact, I had a little control over them. Um, but Ryu got chosen for the aspect of medium. Which basically gave him the ability to separate stuff put stuff in other dimensions, and move around with teleportation abilities at will. Kind of cool. Um, and immediately Haro begins working much closer with these aspects. Particularly the aspects of, particularly D Domo, the aspect of Dark Blood, and Ryu, the aspect of Median. I ended up going on what was called the loot freighter quest, the loot freighter for a little bit, and then decided I, I looked at the GM and decided I don't need to be here. We are violating some orders of the planet, and at the same time, this is not something Hara wants. Can I leave? And I did. I left. Uh, and then I came back and found out that the Stone of Rend, i.e., death and fate, kind of fused together, was about to be a quest for. And if you'd like to take a break now, this is the end of part two. So it's up to you. Welcome back to part three, the Stone of Rend. Now at this point we have established Dome, we have established Satsumi as the aspect of growth, Domo as the aspect of dark blood, and Ryu as the aspect of median, with Haro being a minor instead of a major aspect of the goddess of nature. And so the aspect of Rend, the entire concept was two things. Life isn't fair and you must sacrifice for what you want. So the sacrifice part here was the most interesting part, but to start with, we had Char from Gundam, the original Gundam series Char, Piccolo, get that one, Piccolo. Um, we had the Count of Monte Cristo in here, and we had, I'm trying to remember exactly the name of this character, because I don't, I didn't watch a lot of it, it was it's the main boy from uh, Evangelion Genesis um, I'm trying to remember his name right now God why does this plague me so I don't like writing scripts because then it doesn't seem like it's truly emotional and, and real and everything there uh, what was his name Shinji Shinji So we had Shinji as the five people who had a stone. Now this was the, we were back down to five because the media was insane with eight people debating. But now the first thing that happens is they were played Russian roulette. Five cards were placed upon the table to represent the point at which the five play, at which the five player characters touched the, the stone of Rand in the middle of, of this massive table. I mean, not only was this table mat, this table was huge and 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 dark. The room was pitch black, except for little lights shining down on the five seated individuals. And so, as they reached forward, they touched this stone, and Char, as unfair as it seems, was just killed flat out, dead. 
But then his spirit was brought back without its mask, so he revealed his identity and everything. The table rearranged itself, and the four survivors, Piccolo, Shinji, the Count of Monte Cristo, and, um... God, now I'm brain farting. Ah, uh, I just had this. It was on the tip of my tongue. Shinji, the Count of Monte Cristo, Piccolo, and God, somebody. Anyway, they're arranged on the other side of the table, and the exact words given were, bid what you will sacrifice for this aspect. Those were the words. Bid what you will sacrifice for this aspect. I'm sorry to the person whose character's name I've obviously forgotten. Um, it's been a few days. Give me a break. I'm terrible with names. The fact I've remembered this many names is a miracle. But the f bids were um, Shinji actually refused to bid. He bid nothing. The Count of Monte Cristo's first bid was to bid the ability to love and feel. Piccolo's first I forget what Piccolo's, what the other two's first bid was, or, or if they were even announced, but the one that was accepted. No, they weren't announced. That's why I don't know. The one that was accepted was the Count of Monte Cristo's ability to love. And because it was accepted, at the end of the auction, whether it's the winning bid or not, he lost the ability to love. Shinji went on a big speech and rant about how he had developed and gained friends, and it was one of the most emotionally heartwarming uh, moments of the entire LARP, like just sitting there listening to. He had, he had this well written speech prepared and everything. Um, now, I'm not particularly one for pre planning LARP. I, I feel it should be completely improvised, but it was good. It was real good, actually. Um, and he still refused to bid anything. Sadly, that heartwarming speech, that massive amount of acting and method act and methodologically act actor style drama didn't win anything at the end of the day the auctioneer char said if you didn't bid anything I cannot expect accept a bit of nothing and this is why I don't remember the other character because the other character withdrew as well and it was down to Piccolo and the Count and Piccolo did make a final plea for everyone that what you are doing is sacrificing for this world. You are not gaining power here. You are giving up power. And so the other person withdrew. I think it was Ryder, actually, withdrew because he was like, I don't want to be stuck to one planet, and I will be stuck here forever. Screw this. Because one of the deals with accepting these aspects was you weren't going to leave the planet uh, unless you intended to return within a certain time frame. You could not leave because you were there to represent the planet and its sentient being. Now Haro, in all of her infinite wisdom, said the following words before they were allowed to give their second bids. The wise wolf knows a bid which cannot be outbid, and if you are willing to hear it, you must only ask her counsel. Piccolo did. So here was the bid that I laid down. For if Piccolo were to bid this, I don't think anything could outbid it. You sacrifice it all. Your memories, everyone's memory of you, your very existence in history becomes nullified. You become nothing but the aspect of Rend itself. There is no past, there is no future, you are simply that aspect. All of your previous existence is unwritten from history. Basically, you have nothing. You become nothing more. And there was there's nothing else you could sacrifice because you lose everything about you. The auctioneer, however, requested Piccolo bid his legacy as a teacher. And all of his teachings would be forgotten and replaced with someone else. Which, by the way makes Gohan's dad, Goku, look e like even more of an asshole. Because at that point, we determined that Mr. Popo trained Gohan. Go watch DBZ Abridged. Just type in DBZ Abridged, the best of Mr. Popo. 
Imagine Gohan in Mr. Popo's hands. Gonna leave that there for a moment. Now it was the Count's turn for a bit of drama because Piccolo has the winning bid. And the auctioneer wanted to see the Count of Monte Cristo bid his all of his revenge and stop seeking revenge. And the demon within came out and announced that he could not bid that. And so Albert, the Count's loyal servant, had to console the Count as the Count withdrew from bidding. And the silence in the room for three minutes. I mean, it was gut-wrenchingly good. The, the, these guys, everybody brought their A-game, and this was a wonderful time. Piccolo became the aspect of death and fate, and was only known as a warrior, no longer known as a teacher. You can imagine how that made him feel. Because he remembered what he should have done, but no one else did. He had to endure that torture for the rest of his life. And this is the end of part three. These parts are about ten minutes long. Now we're going to be getting into part four, the convergence. Immediately afterwards, after deciding the aspect of Renz, the convergence began. The universe itself projecting its energy throughout to distribute to planets. And the Sailor Scouts came up with this idea that the way, best way to save Narsala was to make a Sailor Narsala. And let them make their own Sailor Squad. Meanwhile, Edward... Yeah, the Full Metal Alchemist came up with this idea that we could use the energy from the Convergence to power the dome that was keeping everyone alive who couldn't walk on the planet's surface for possibly indefinitely by just funneling it, funneling enough of it in to create a gigantic permanent battery. We did that. While the Sailor Scouts tried to use the Convergence energy. So basically... Three plant, two planets worth of energy were ripped from the Convergence and not given to the planet. This is going to be massive repercussions later. But, um, so while Haro is over there debating, and, I, and I'm going back and forth because as I'm casting the spell, I'm also telepathically connected now to the other aspects. So every couple minutes I would go over and ask them a question about what was going on, get some information, and then tell them what I wanted to say and then run back. Um, I was only allowed to distribute one sentence to, one sentence back, and one sentence back to, and then I had to go back over to my scene. Um, so they're doing a writer proposes this king's table between the sailor scouts and the aspects and the neutral parties, and they do this big debate about what to do. Because Narsala rejected the person they selected for the set for to become the guardian of the planet i.e the new sailor narsala yeah Th this is where we start to get into the oh my god this anime just went off the train and is now not only a train wreck but has found three more railroad railroad tracks to crash into and level everything yeah this is where things start going way off the beaten path of expected anyway so at that point, um, we the debate's going, and as the debate starts to end, the spell ends to draw the rest of the energy from the convergence. And because of the sheer amount of energy and rage that I, that that Haro was feeling, i.e., the character I'm playing, um, this first time that I had publicly done, I, I did it one other time when we were talking, when we were debating about the Stone of Median and revealed my second, her second nature, the nature of the wolf, of the predator, and of rage. I leaped into, over towards these guys in full wolf form, pissed off as a hornet because of the debate that was raging of the fact that I am the goddess of nature and these sailor scouts don't seem to take the hint that we have five aspects technically. 
we have growth, we have dark blood, we have medium, we have random, we have the goddess of nature as a minor fifth aspect. They weren't satisfied with that. They wanted a true guardian of the planet. Hara volunteered. Because at this point, she's been elevated from just a goddess of the harvest and a goddess of wolves to the goddess of nature. And this is her new home. And if you've ever seen Spice and Wolf, you realize that Haro, when it comes right down to it, will defend what she cares about, even if she acts like she doesn't half the time. And will do so in a vicious, absolutely gut-wrenching manner. So, at this point, um, I stood in the middle of all these Sailor Scouts. And this is where my memory starts to get a little clearer because it's more recent. And Sailor Moon will not shut up. So Piccolo says, Someone please shut the little girl up. Harlow gets, ha Haro gets this absolutely wolfish grin on this giant wolf muzzle, looks over at her, and licks Sailor Moon from ankle to head with a giant wolf tongue. You can all die laughing now, as you can just imagine Sailor Moon freaking out from that. It was hilarious. And Piccolo actually went, that's funny, I've actually gained a sense of humor now that I'm deaf, and that's hilarious. So Piccolo was laughing. You know I've done it right when Piccolo laughs. But um, they did do their little ritual, and the planet accepted Haro, because Haro had been at three of the four aspect choosings, had been advising those working to get that aspect, and on top of all of this, was a minor aspect herself now, the planet accepted her as Guardian. Which, if you know this character, um, the following phrase is not one that she utters willingly if she can help it. <sighs> Sailor Narhala, <laughs> prism power, activate, makeup. And the Sailor Scouts proceeded to teach Haro how to be a Sailor Scout. And she grumbled and griped and criticized and and the whole way through it, like, I hate this, I hate this. But at this point, Haro has become a fifth aspect. Because at that point we had growth, we had dark blood, we had median, we had um, rend, and now we have a guardian to call upon. So the planet now has the four aspects who exercise its will, and then they have basically their go-to person for you are the protector at the end of the day to make sure that what is going to happen is going to benefit the planet. And then the xenomorphs descended upon us. Yeah, there's xenomorphs and there's sandworms and there's a bunch of other really freaky monsters on this planet that Haro now has to manage. Um, and we ended up having to fight off xenomorphs. Ow. It hurts. But we did manage to uh, fight them off. The peop there, there were some people who stayed behind at the... So while we were doing our ceremony, the Xenomorphs were actually attacking the people who were doing the uh, power battery ritual that Haro had jumped away from. And one person took the pa battery and ran while everybody else did a last stand. Um, most of them died. Flat out. They died. There are respawns in this LARP, but death still has a massive penalty, and they, they died. And we were torn up about the fact that we couldn't get to them in time to save them. Because we fought through our wave of Xenomorphs, then we went to go fight to save them, because they weren't that far away from us. We were all still at the Convergence Plateau. And they couldn't get away from us. But then Haro, being the goddess of nature, saved a couple people. Because the Xenomorphs obviously would destroy spacesuits and whatever, but because she was the goddess of nature, the, one of the immediate powers she got was if you're standing within so many feet of her, you can breathe. Because she's going to make the atmosphere not hostile. So that ended up saving quite a few people. And then at that point we all went back to the dome to discuss what we were going to do with the massive upcoming events 
because we still have a couple things that are now going to happen. First off, a group went and, and, and found some sandworms, killed one of them, and pissed off the biggest one on the planet. Now, Haro is a very powerful goddess, but is not capable of fighting that massive sandworm by herself at all. Don't even ask. And then on top of this, um, somebody had apparently pissed off the Zentradi from, yeah, from Robotech. And they were coming to invade! Um, but also during the Convergence, somebody stretched a massive rubber band between the two moons. And that's going to come into important later as we get into anime laws and physics that absolutely break my brain. Um, so the Zentradi were coming to invade. The Sandworm was coming to destroy the dome and it was more than capable of doing it. <sighs> and on top of all of this, because of what we had done during the Convergence, we had awoken a great evil within the planet. The evil that was driving the local fauna to be so aggressive and angry was now fully awake and capable of getting out of its cage. Not a happy place for anyone. So this ends part four. And we're going to get into part five, the finale, very shortly. Part five, everyone. Welcome back. Uh, again, I'm not breaking this video up. You guys can break it up on your own time. You have the parts broken up for you and segmented out. And in the description below, if you haven't noticed, there's actually little parts that tell you this is where you want to go to if you want to skip to the part X. So at this point, um, the four aspects want to go fight the great evil. Haro recognized the balance that needed to be achieved within nature in keeping the sandworm, the mother sandworm alive. Everyone was so gung-ho to go kill it. And then she was like, no, we can't do that because it's the only thing that can eat the xenomorphs and keep their population in check. And unless you want to be overrun with them later, we have to figure out a way to not kill Big Mama Sandworm. Yeah. So Big Mama Sandworm is uh, pissed off. And the other aspects are going to go fight the Great Evil, which it turns out is the evil Gundam from G Gundam. Who actually managed to kill Domo. Who then went into the... Who the planet then took this dead aspect, brought it in, and slowly brought it back to life. Um, but they had a giant mecha battle. Giant mecha battle. Meanwhile, over here... Um, at the giant sandworm, first off, people were arguing with Hara. And she looked at them and said, Look, I don't give two shits about your dome. And they were like, What? Are you serious? I don't. You're human, and you came to a hostile world, and now you might have to pay the consequences for it. However, I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt that if you kill Big Mama Sandworm, in a month, you're going to be overrun with xenomorphs because then she's going to stop making new sandworms and then they're going to stop eating the xenomorphs and then it spirals out of control and there's no way in hell I could keep up with the xenomorph population without the sandworms. So at that point, there was this debate over what if it doesn't work? If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. We still have to try and keep this thing alive, even if all we do is beat it sen senseless. So at most, we can beat it unconscious. So Gray from Fairy Tail put up a dome. Giant dome. And then showed off with it, too. So people were like, you are not the best in Fairy Tail, but damn it, you are right now um, to contain this thing. But the dome didn't quite go up first. What happened first was Haro and a small ground team got in front of this thing. And I'm gonna illustrate how big this thing is. Captain Harlock's ship, his spaceship, his giant space cruiser, is a grade four, i.e. size category four. 
This thing is size category 5. It's bigger than his ship. It's so much bigger than his ship. It dwarfs Gundams and mechs. This thing was huge. And it was moving at a blistering pace straight for the dome. And we knew that if it got to the dome, it would only take one hit for it to smash the shield and bring the hostile atmosphere into the dome and kill everyone. We knew this going in. So as you can imagine, Haro being a uh, still 10 foot tall, 18 foot long wolf, but that's tiny in comparison to this thing, but she's still the goddess of nature and technically now the guardian of the planet. Does her hilarious power-up catchphrase, Sailor Nursala Prism Power Activate Makeup, transforms into her giant wolf form with a star chart that explains exactly where Narhala is in the universe now patterned onto her fur. And the first things out of my mouth was, I really, really hate that phrase. I hope that one day I can pick out a different one. But then as this worm's approaching, in the most guttural, growling voice I could muster in real life, and I will do it for you here, because I can do horrific things with my voice, both up, as I was talking like this for most of the weekend, and down. Haro does that kind of snarl and goes, Stop in the name of your goddess. Only more of a wolf, wolf roar and a guttural growl at this sandworm. Which, surprising to everyone, including Haro, stops. And I had to take a moment and go, out of character and in character, I must state the following fact. I didn't expect to get this far with negotiation. And I actually got through two rounds of negotiating with the sandworm before it said, no, I'm going to go destroy the dome anyway. To which Gray's response was to encase it in a gigantically massive dome from underneath all the way over top with a single entry point. And then all of the people with spaceships opened up with orbital bombardment. All of the mechs poured in. Everything we had poured in against this giant sandworm. So you have... Um, you have the Evangelion Spear of Longitis plunging into this thing. You have the Count of Monte Cristo and Albert's dueling mechs going at this thing. You have Harlock and Deslock's battle cruisers shooting at it. You have Haro jumped up on the back of it, right underneath the, right behind the mouth, biting in, trying to get at the nerve endings at the base of the neck. Everyone just going at this thing with everything we have, and it's taking it. And we were like, holy shit, can we actually bring this thing down or not? Um, it did try to meet salad us by bringing, by jumping out of the sand and bringing its entire weight into the ground as a shock wave to bounce off of all of the walls. And several people took a boatload of damage from that. Um, it also tried to eat Shinji, just flat out eat his mech. And it could, it could actually wrap its jaws around and eat him. Um, and Shinji barely survived not being eaten. And then we started bringing it down. And finally, its its final attempt to bring us down was to um, uh, ban from Fairy Tail and Gohan got a whip around its tongue in its open maw and yanked its tongue off out. And it turns out the reason it can eat Xenomorphs is because its blood is a stronger acid than their blood. <laughs> and it's proceeded to spray literal bathtubs of acid at everyone. Um, Albert, seeing that the Count of Monte Cristo's mech was pretty much destroyed, um, used his mech to shield him. Haro jumped off the back of its neck and actually took a huge hit from the initial, to, to absorb some of the initial acid spray. Um, I had one hit point left. Like, that was the only time I'd been hit all, all the entire time, and I had one hit point. And she has a massive amount of damage reduction, and just, nope. Uh, the exact description for me was um, that you could see parts of my, of Haro's body, i.e. my body, that 
there was no skin or muscle or fat. It was you could just see the bone that was left, and she was still standing. The worm, however, finally got the hint that not smash was a thing, and started to try to run. And several people went, "How?" Can, and, and, and and Edward Elric. The alchemist came up and and yelled at Haro, "Do we let it go?" And Haro said yes, and then screamed at the worm, "Cease and run!" Um, the worm ran. People tried to argue again that we shouldn't let it go, and Haro was like, "No, no, no! It's learned its lesson. Let it go. I need it. It needs to stay alive." So we brought the dome down, and the worm bolted. Um, and then everybody proceeded to try to heal everyone's wounds. Haro, however, immediately went after the worm. Not to kill it, but to communicate with it. And couldn't catch it. But she could summon some of the other worms together and explain the rules, as it were. So the rules as follows for Narsala from now on are the dome and anything with inside of the dome is off limits to the worms. But once the humans try to go past that point, the worms are freely are encouraged to devour them. And should they ever try to build another dome on the planet, the mother worm is to is, is fair game for her just to go destroy it flat out. So to create the balance between nature and human. Um, and that is kind of almost where we have an end. Um, the Zatrati fleet warped in straight into the giant rubber band between the two moons, and then the most impractical method of physics ever, the two moons <laughs> cracker-balled the fleet. Because we all know Zatrati ships are made of paper anyway. Um, and the rubber band, of course, broke as the two moons went back into orbit because it's a rubber band. It's only so strong. Uh, the slingshot was restored... I found out from the other aspects later that even though Domo had been slain and was regenerating within the planet, they had managed to put down the great evil. The 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 super evil Gundam from G Gundam. I forget its name, but that's what it was. Um, this is this is an anime LARP. A bunch of anime characters got together. Um, and then that was almost everything that happened. James, i.e. Gein, had been doing quite a bit of things in the background. So first off, he got um, he got the legendary Dog of War. I forget the name of that particular Pokemon, and I guarantee you there's a picture of it up right now, and I don't even know what his name is. And then, on top of that, because Haro had gone... Haro wanted to create a Luna, basically, for Narsala. If you've ever seen Sailor Moon, you know Luna is like their guide and and kind of the person who, who helps the otherwise dill-witted Sailor Scouts not be so dill-witted. Um, and the person who had originally been rejected decided, no, she wanted to go home, and I forget her name at this point. So then Haro went to James, and even though Haro doesn't like James, because he captures animals and puts them in cages, she offered him to become that aspect, and he agreed. And for the time, they are currently negotiating when he gets to actually spend time as a human, and when he gets, and when he has to spend the rest of his time as a wolf, because in Haro's eyes, if you're gonna help me, you're gonna at least be mostly animal. Don't argue. So yeah, that was a thing. And then James also got force training from Master Yoda, so he's a Jedi Knight now. Who's also the. I believe I refer to him as the, uh, not as Luna, but as, um, as the Guardian Guide. I haven't actually given him a, the Guardian Guide James, also known as Jedi Knight James, <laughs> also known as Best Pokemon Trainer James. Yeah, that, that was an epic epic battle there was so much going on i can't even remember half the stuff that happened in the battle with the sandworm because there were literally 30 characters trying to take this thing down and i only got i only really wanted to have the ability to relay the high points i know other people will come by and relay their epilogues and that will be awesome 
But at that point, Haru had achieved what she truly wanted, and there was now a fifth aspect on the planet, the guardian and goddess of nature. She had a home. And now we're going to get into Haru's epilogue. So this is the end of chapter four, or chapter five, whichever chapter we're on, and we're going to move into the epilogue. So this is what you were waiting for. Here it is. So Haru, after finishing her negotiation with James, which we did on the way home actually, determined that James could spend, ener sp spend his energy if he wished to manifest himself as a human for however long he wished, but he had to primarily live as a wolf in order to connect to nature. Now he could bring his Pokemon around with him as all he wanted. That was fine. Um... But he also would become Haro's primary um, liaison, if you will, between the dome and Haro. So when, you know, the miners started doing things and were getting attacked by animals, and they're like, why are we getting attacked by animals? Well, I think the goddess of nature is pissed at us. Why is she always pissed at us? She kills so many of us. And then James would come by and go, well, you guys did this, and these are the rules, and you violated the rules. So she stepped up and said, nope, you guys can have them. So that was the uh, that's the idea, and so that you know, they won't necessarily shoot the messenger. And if they really want to hunt down Haro, good luck, because at this point she's kind of, well, you know, really powerful. Went from powerful to really powerful. Uh, she will spend probably the next, I want to say, fifty years consoling the mother sandworm in order to have a positive relationship with it. Because Agito had been on it, her the sandworm's back at the same point Haro was, and had been doing his best to literally industrial drill his way towards the brain of the worm. And the worm didn't know the difference between Haro and Agito's attacks. So the worm is terrified of Haro. Which is a good thing. It means that she can command the sandworm's respect now. Even though they could probably kill her on their own. Um... But she will likely spend about 50 years consoling the sandworm, and she will spend much of her time rebalancing the ecosystem, going through making sure the xenomorphs are not extinct, but are not out of control, and restoring the herbivores and other creatures of the planet. She will also be spending a lot of time explaining to the miners why it's a bad idea to dig up all of the resources on the planet, and why it's a bad idea to continue to aggravate the wildlife or her. But in addition to all of this, there are some touching things that she's going to do. Um, she's going to spend a lot of time with Ryosho, or uh, Ryoho. And it's because they both competed for the same aspect. And even though Haro got her own aspect made for her, Ryo is now on a planet where he has to give up much. And she kind of feels this connection to him that throughout the entire thing, he was one of her biggest supporters to become this new aspect, as well as one of someone she could console to. And it was, it was really beautiful. Now, I know there's a bunch of stuff I left out, and that's because I don't have time. We're already over an hour. Yeah, you guys have been coming back and watching this for an hour. <laughs> there's a lot of stuff I left out. And if you want to add stuff in the comments, then go right ahead. Um, I would appreciate you guys filling in a lot of extra story blanks and a lot of extra stuff. And if you want me to do a video epilogue, go ahead. But we're going to finish up Haro's epilogue first. Um, so she's going to spend a lot of time with him and she's going to spend time training with Doma the aspect of dark blood because she recognizes he's powerful like his raw physical ability and power is there and she needs to learn that if she's to be called upon to be the guardian of the planet from outside forces she needs to know how to do it so she's going to be spending time with those two aspects a lot and the other aspect she's going to be spending a lot of time with is Piccolo. Piccolo and Haro had a lot of RP together all weekend. 
and because of this um, it only makes sense for her to I guess her sense of humor and Piccolo's sense of new sense found sense of humor work well together and while she is going to give James some training, she's going to let James figure out mostly on his own. Because in her eyes, I have given you this because I see you're, you have some wisdom. I'm not going to interfere with your growth and wisdom unless you come to her to ask her counsel. And so she's probably, when she feels down or she just feels like having fun or she wants to make sure Piccolo has someone to talk to, so that the aspect of Ren doesn't just become an all-consuming aspect of death. She's going to go talk to the aspect of Ren. And it might be a daily routine for her just to come up and be like, Hey, I found something tasty on the planet. You want to try it? I know you only drink water, but I figured you could at least try the food. <laughs> um, and that's Haro's job now. Is she is She is the aspect of nature on the planet, and she is the first thing that probably is going to get called upon when an outside force threatens the planet again and that's what she's there for she's going to be spending all, most of her time balancing out the nature learning what it is for as she will put it I am Haro the wise wolf and also mother of nature but should you anger me I can become the most Lethal guardian of all time. And that's what she's going to do. I hope you guys have enjoyed this rundown of the LARP from NikoCon. And I hope you've actually watched the entire thing and heard the entire epilogue. If you did like this video, please hit the like button. If you have more stuff to add, let me know. Like, I, I might do a follow-up video to add in funniest moments and stuff like that. But put it in the comments below on the video on YouTube so that I can see it and go back and just add in a very funny video. Um, there is one thing I would like to add at the end here. For the first time at any at any of these anime LARPs ever apparently, the Elric brothers got their bodies back. Yay! That is, that, that is just a note I wanted to add at the end. I know he was sitting here watching this entire video going, when is she going to say it? When is she going to say it? Yeah, I made you wait till the end. Ha. Um, if you would like to see more stuff by me, Fiora, then subscribe to the channel. I will likely be going to a couple more cons in the coming year, and also be going to their LARPs. Um, but I will be coming back to NikoCon next year, and anytime I'm at NikoCon, I'm going to play Haro. Um, it is an anime character that has always won my heart, and now has won my heart to play her in whatever situation comes forward. But the other cons, I've already started planning out cosplays for Yang and Raven, Yang from Ruby and Raven from Teen Titans, as well as cosplays for Haro next year. In the meantime, um, the previous NikoCon video is right there for you guys. If you want to support the channel, click on the ad at the end of the video, or click on the Patreon page, but this is Fiora officially signing out for right now. I only put ads at the beginning and end of this video because I put the chapter breaks in for you guys, so I'll see you guys in the next video.